Okay. I'm going to be very straightforward about this because I think I'm not the only one who feels this way. I've been involved the NBA and the lockout. Pretty much as a strike. That's how I consider it. Um, they're fighting over billions of dollars. They One side want to split 50-50. The other side don't think they should split 50-50. Um, whatever the case may be, there is no basketball. And already, two weeks of the regular season is gone. And I'm pretty sure that all of the regular season will be gone before the end of November. Um, now... If you would have asked me years ago when I was a teenager, would I have been upset, would I have been mad about the NBA um, going on strike, how could they do this, uh, what we're going to do, I probably would tell you I would have been berserk and, and mad and upset. However, I am 34 years old, and to be put blunt, I can care less if they guys uh, stay out for years or two years or four years for that matter. It doesn't matter. I'll survive. In fact, I'll probably watch more college basketball than anything in the um, during the turn during the turn of the season. Um, it, I will not miss it. And the reason why is that craze fan, that diehard fan, or you know, if you don't want to call me a diehard fan because I feel this way, that's fine. But that craze fan that you know is loyal to the players have long been gone when I couldn't even afford to get a ticket to watch them play on a live game. Um, the last game I went to see was in 1994. That's the last live basketball game I have saw. And it was uh, a very good basketball game, in fact. I had very good seats. I paid 30 Three dollars for that seat. Um, that's how much this seat was. It was not all the way in the nosebleed section. It was like pretty much in the middle, and I actually enjoyed watching my Knicks play a very good game. I became a Knicks fan in 2000. And, no, I'm not 2000. I'm sorry, 1992. Um, with Patrick Hewing facing the Bulls, it was fun. It was entertaining. I was really into the game, and I really became a Knicks fan after that time. I followed basketball, but not a not religiously. Um, I became a Knicks fan. Um, didn't follow them in cable because we didn't really have um, that much cable and we had to share the television. Uh, the, the cable we do have was pretty much limited. We just had the basics. So basic did include um, the MSG network and, sp and sports channel. So we end up, so I ended up becoming an M um, WFAN fan because WFAN had the sports um, events. I will listen to them religiously. I will watch their, their games, whatever it came out. I will always watch Channel 11 News to see if they won. And it was a good time to be a basketball fan. It was a lot of great matches, a lot of great rivalry between the Bulls and Knicks. A lot of, um, a lot of good basketball teams that I always wondered it would pull the threat to the Knicks. Um, and even despite uh, my bitter disappointment of them not making it to the big dance, I, bec I really enjoyed watching basketball from then on then. I really enjoyed watching the games. Um, once they started raising prices, and it started raising prices not just once every two years. They raised prices year after year to the point where when I watched an NBA game on television, I don't see true NBA fans. I don't see true Knicks fans. I see guys in business suits just there just to be there and that's always been a big problem with me um you know the 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 average fan the diehards at least those who follow them since the 1970s and 60s um they're no longer sitting on those seats uh, they've been pretty much priced out because they can't afford it who can afford a twelve hundred dollar ticket um that's working pretty much two jobs just to make ends meet that's that's ludicrous and the tickets that they do have that are reasonable um, like the ticket I paid um, when I first saw the next game, um, a ticket that cost me like $36. That same ticket is only as good as the nosebleed section. I'm talking about way in the back, and those seats are extremely limited. Um, and you know what? In terms of MSG's concern, in terms of a lot of these big time arenas concerned, they get away with that because their fan base is not at baseball. It's not like football. They have a strong fan base where you know they can they will be able to fill up 19,000 seats because the 19,000 seats who's going to be seeing it are those who can actually afford it. Um, that is not to say that baseball tried to attempt to do the same thing um, and actually backfire because they have more. 
um, seeks to, to fill, and not many people are willing to shell out that much money to see a baseball game up into home, up into the bleacher sections. This is not going to happen. But in this case, it worked for basketball because there's not much seat cap capability um, than baseball, football combined. So, with that being said, I could no longer see a basketball game on live, which I actually did want to see. Um, I saw I saw some of the game, most of the games on television, um, which was kind of cool. But uh, like I said, it, it's very few or far between the same. Plus, um, when they did want to strike the first time, I believe when they had that shortened season. Um, there were some things that was being said to the players that really pissed me off. I'm talking about piss me off. Um, and I'll never forget it because I, I still have respect for Patrick Hewing. But when he said that, it was very clear that I can't root for the players. I have to root for the t-shirt, the uniform, um, what they represent. Um, not much for the players because their loyalty, our idea of loyalty, is not the same as theirs. Um, when he, when they ask him a question about, um, will you guys uh, be okay? He answered right back and said, I'll try to survive. Um, like, they're losing, it's like they're almost losing money um, or have no money. You guys making millions of dollars. How the hell did it, to say that? It's just unconscionable. I um, mean, that was big, that was a big, big uh, wake up call for me saying, hey, these guys are only. You know, and if not many much for the game, but you know, for the big dollars. And um, look, I got nothing against that. You you guys want to make as much money as fine. You know, if they want to pay, who am I to 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 be bitter? But don't come on the on TV or on the radio and say that you're struggling to make ends meet when you guys are making more than the average person who um who works two jobs and barely makes twenty thousand a year. Come on, guys, that that doesn't even sound um correct. Um, that always bothered me a lot. That really did bother me, um, to a very large degree. Um, I don't know how you guys felt about, about you, but that's when I started having a different view on sports altogether. I no longer looked up to a lot of sports fans out there. I no longer looked up to a lot of, uh... A lot of uh, of these guys, um, you know, demeanor. I realized, um, although there are some nice ones out there, I'm not going to brand all of them, but I realized that there are most of them, um, they really are, they have treated this sport uh, as a business. No more, no less. So I said, fine, you know, that's cool. If you want to treat it like a business, that's fine. But at the same time, I don't have to, you know, look up to any of you guys. I can respect you guys, what you do. You have a talent that I cannot do, but that's as far as it's going to go. And, and I have been doing it ever since. I'm still a Yankee fan. I'm still a Knicks fan. I'm still a Jets fan. Even though I wasn't a Jets fan when I was growing up, that was an accident. And that's a story by itself. But I'm, st uh, I'm still a fan of these sports some teams. And I'm a Ranger fan. I love the Rangers. Um, I, was, I was jumping for joy when they won the 1994 Stanley Cup. I was right there watching them from beginning to end. It was the greatest <laughs> moment of my life. Um, first time I witnessed a hockey team win a Stanley Cup, that was from my area. And I have followed the Rangers ever since. Um, I'm even a Liberties fan. Um, but in terms of me idolizing a particular player, that's not going to happen. And in terms of me feeling sorry for these players to be to, because they can't play the, the, the sport of basketball, I don't feel sorry for them either. Um, this is more of a union dispute um, between billions of dollars um, that they, for some reason, they cannot come to an agreement. So, fine. There won't be no basketball this year. Um, what I mean, I'm going to just, you know, lay down and mope and cry. No, I watch college sports for... for to fill in the time. I still have football at that, at that time. I still got the Rangers hockey. Uh, I watch those. I'm not going to go crazy um, and go nuts. I'll just watch those sports. Or I take a look and see what minor league sports are, are in the area and, you know, check them out. See what the new talents are. But as far as me, you know, giving a damn about these sports, these sports icons and their little bickering because they can't sit down like you know like adults and negotiate a contract like anyone else because they want to you know they want to hog as much money as possible then I'm sorry I just can't comprehend that and I'm not going to try and comprehend it um, 
I hope for, for the average fan who wants to see the NBA um, come back. I went. I, I'm. You know. I hope they does for you guys. But um, as far as I'm concerned, this is my feeling on it. Uh, my view is that um, I refuse to feel sorry for millionaires, millionaires and billionaires fighting over something that is pretty much pointless. Um, what you guys feeling on this situation? Do you guys agree? Disagree? Give me your feedback on this um, this audio topic. Um, I like to hear from you guys. You may have a different stand on how it is. Um, um, if you do, comment about it. If you guys don't agree with me, comment about it anyway. I like to hear you guys' um, point of views on this matter. Um, but until then, um, yeah, this is J77 saying take care.